This is Free Range Digital Design Foundation Modeling, Chapter 10, uh, Second Lecture. So we've been looking at some new gates, particularly NAND, NORX, ORNX, NOR gates. Talked about those in the last lecture. Uh, showed some interesting functionality with them, uh, such that you can make inverters with them. And there's some special functiona functionality associated with an AND gate also that we use an example uh, in this lecture we will be talking about functional completeness among other things very important concept one of those concepts you need to take away as it can be asked in an interview very easily by the HR person and the HR person would know if you got the answer right functionally complete gate is a gate that you can use to implement an AND operation or operation and an inversion operation. So those are the three basic Boolean logic operations. Operations associated with Boolean logic. A functionally complete gate can do all three of those. We'll take a look at this. We'll look at it in more depth in a, another chapter. And so the idea here is if you look at if you look at an AND gate, let's look at a NAND gate. First of all, a NAND gate can be modeled as a an AND gate with an inverter so this is this is equivalent to uh, this circuit here so it makes sense I can get an AND operation out of this a NAND gate and, and drop an inverter in front of it so this is my AND operation okay so moving on in this thing if I take a NAND gate F equals A B there's my NAND operation if I demorganize this by use of this over bar this is going to be F equals A plus B. Now, without getting too far into it, uh, we didn't do anything to it, except we got this OR function out of it. And so without too much ado on that, that proves that we can get an OR function out of it. I already proved that in a previous chapter, we actually have two ways of using a NAND gate to get an inverter out of it. A NAND gate is functionally complete. If you look at an AND gate, of course, there's your AND function right there. Um, I can actually take that equation for an AND gate and complement it twice, which means you get back the, the value. What I'm going to do here is A plus B. I'm going to take down one of those over bars, and once again, I could still, with an AND gate, get and OR function. But the key here is with a AND gate, I have no way of getting an inversion operation out of it. My two options are clumping the, tying the two inputs together, and when I tie the two inputs together, it, it actually doesn't do anything, it just gets that input back. The other option is tying one of the inputs to a one. When I tie one of the inputs to a one, you can see that the other input comes comes back because these two columns match. And of course, if I take this AND gate and tie it to a zero, the output's always zero. So I cannot get an in inversion operator of AND gate. Uh, we showed like in the last set of lectures that we can get a inversion operator of a NAND gate. So the functionally complete gates are complete equals NAND and NOR. So you can do the same argument with a NOR gate. We just won't get into it. Leave that as exercise to the reader. Those are the only two functionally complete gates. Um, I cannot get an AND OR, an inverter out of a AND and OR gate, and I certainly can't get them out of X OR and X NOR. So this is an example where we typically try not to do this, but if we need to extract some XORs out of this equation here, we have to do it. Now there's no super easy way to do this. You essentially have to stare at it for a while. And I'm gonna try to stare at this for a while. The way to do this is to look for XOR and XNOR operations. So I can see one's really obvious right here. So this is super factorable. Um, that's going to be A times B exclusive OR C. That's my exclusive OR function. So if I keep looking at this thing, I can. I think there's another term in here. It's it's this one here. 
these two terms. If I, if I factor this, this is C bar times A, B. Um, once again, this is going to be C bar times A. Okay, and so the final equation here, A, B, C, is, is this equation. You can argue that it's a little bit uh, fewer number of gates or fewer number of inputs or smaller or more reduced than the original equation. But the key here is that when you need to extract XORs or XNORs, there's no real easy way to do it. You have to stare at it and look for the XOR and XNOR operations. These were both XOR operations I pulled out of that thing. It would be the same procedure to pull an XNOR out.